Over the last 10 years or so, video games as a medium have been transitioning away from being seen as a silly kids medium, and are instead mainly trying to be presented as a serious art form. While I hold the opinion that serious and deep writing in games peaked around the turn of the millennium, with gaming now having grown in the public consciousness, and its emphasis on darker and more realistic stories, it's likely no surprise that we've seen an explosion in games trying to handle real-world politics. Like movies, TV shows, and arguably the world in general, the gaming medium has embraced politics and the idea of trying to have a political message in their art. I personally don't think there's anything necessarily wrong with this. Art has been used to convey the political turmoil of a civilization for hundreds, if not thousands of years. However, I do believe there's a right and wrong way to do this. In this video, I'm going to try to be impartial to anyone political leaning, but instead give an example of how gaming as a medium, through unique acts of giving its players agency, explore politics in ways that simply can't be done in other medium. I also want to show how developers can implement politics into their games without coming across as propaganda. As a developer, you have to remember, you're selling a product. A political message coming from a consumerist product, if not done right, will just be seen as corporate sponsored propaganda, no matter the intentions of the developers. Are you gonna sign this or will it be your surviving family members? One game that really succeeds at how it handles politics is 2010's Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas is a game that, despite its age, is still praised to this day due to its writing and player choice. The major reason people still discuss this game, however, is mainly due to the heated arguments you'll find online about which of the three major factions were superior. You see, in the post-apocalyptic world of New Vegas, the player is free to help or harm a large array of factions, all differing in political ideology. But what Fallout New Vegas does that really sets it apart is that it understands a core principle of how political ideologies are formed. It might be a hard pill to swallow, but the fact is, is that political opinions have more to do with a person's surrounding environment than it does their morality or intelligence. If you've lived in multiple locations, especially locations that differ in their cultural or economic class, you'll come to realize that how people are raised or what environment they come from will almost always be a major determiner of a group of people's general political leanings. For example, it's no coincidence that big cities tend to have people that vote for policies that encourage government-sponsored intervention in economic or other matters. While people that live in more rural areas tend to favor politics that promote smaller governments, more independence, and community-based approaches to societal ills. This makes sense too given that in large densely populated cities, you're less likely to know the local residents around you and so can't be expected to simply rely on them in times of need. On the other hand, in smaller tight-knit communities, you are more likely to be able to rely on the people around you, both because they're more likely to be related to you, or at the very least, be someone you know. Keeping what I just said in mind doesn't mean that the developers have to be some sort of centrist that has no preference for which ideology he or she thinks is better. For example, it's no secret that the writers of New Vegas use characters like Veronica or Arcade Ganon to weigh in their own opinions on the Fallout setting. Only to obfuscate my past association with a fascist paramilitary organization. Not only that, but many people consider the NCR to be the canon and writer's favorite route and faction, which makes sense given how much love the NCR route got compared to the other three routes of the game. Despite this, the devs didn't show the NCR as a perfect utopian government void of all wrongdoing. As a player, we can see the corruption, incompetence, and slow pace that normally come with large governments. They were going door to door asking if anyone knew any scientists. I said look no further. They asked me if I knew anything about power plants. I said as much as anyone I had ever met. They asked me how well I understood theoretical physics. I said I had a theoretical degree in physics. They said welcome aboard. Now, compare this to the other game's major faction, Caesar's Legion. While I won't say they weren't written as what can be seen as the evil faction of New Vegas, given that they mercilessly kill innocent civilians along with their own soldiers and keep thousands of slaves, a good portion of which being sex slaves, 
we still actually get to hear Caesar's reasoning behind why he has his faction be run like this. And it isn't a generic for power reason either. In Rome, I found a template for a society equal to the challenges of the post-apocalyptic world. A society that could and would survive. A society that could prevent mankind from fracturing and destroying itself in this new world by establishing a new Pax Romana. The best part is, is that as a player, if you don't agree with either faction, then screw them. Join a third faction or decide to go on your own. But what really sets New Vegas above most other games or media in general in how it handles politics aren't its major factions, but its minor ones. Remember what I said about environment being the biggest determiner of a people's general political leaning? New Vegas exemplifies this through two of its minor factions, the people of Good Springs and the Boomers. Starting with the former, Good Springs, the player's starting area has multiple members who believe that while they don't want the New California Republic taking over their small town, they admit they believe it's a better alternative than in being conquered by Caesar's Legion. Given Good Springs is a self-sustaining community, it makes perfect sense that they'd be against being part of a larger government system, since until then they haven't needed one. At the same time, it becomes clear through their recent altercation with a group of gang members known as the Powder Gangers that it's no longer possible to be safe without outside help. Now let's compare them to another minor faction, the Boomers. The Boomers are a minor faction in New Vegas made up of xenophobic explosive nuts. They developed their gun-loving attitude thanks to the vault they were originally stationed in, a vault that happened to contain a huge armory of explosives. While they no longer live in this currently uninhabitable vault, the Boomers took their guns and set up shop in an old Air Force base. Thanks to having the resources necessary to pretty much kill anyone who steps within glancing distance of their base, and since they happen to have the technology to be completely self-sufficient, their fiercely independent and xenophobic beliefs kind of make sense, even if the player personally disagrees with them. I just hoped a savage, oh, outsider, sorry, would make it to our gates before one of those armies out there comes knocking. Compare the Good Springs residents to the Boomers. Good Springs is self-sufficient and wants to be independent, but lacks the ability to protect itself while the Boomers are self-sufficient and definitely can protect themselves. Good Springs, too, may have become just as xenophobic and isolationist if they had the same access to guns that the Boomers currently have. Fallout New Vegas is more than a simple parody because it explores what leads to these beliefs and doesn't demonize them. Because, after all, you've likely figured out the Boomers in New Vegas, based on my description, might be a parody of a certain political party. Once a Republican, always a Republican. But despite what may come across at first as a shallow parody, or maybe even a straw man, in reality is quite justified within the world and lore of Fallout. The player might see the boomers as extremists in their isolationist beliefs, or believe that they should open up more to the outside, something the player can do to an extent through the completion of certain missions, but we can't pretend that their actions within the world of New Vegas are irrational. Given the horrors we as the player have seen roaming the wasteland, from the flora, fauna, and moral standards of the two main factions inhabiting the wasteland, can we blame the boomers for wanting to isolate themselves from it? I don't think so. And that's what makes New Vegas so special. We don't have to agree with any one character or faction, but those political beliefs make sense within their world. It's not just people being crazy or necessarily evil, at least most of the time. Ultimately, as the player, we can help shape the future of either faction. Given our choices in the game, we can see the boomers continue to be isolationist, begin to trade with outside factions, start to leave the compound to explore the wasteland, or help lead their faction to ruin. With Good Springs, we can help protect them, or even betray them. If you decide to go the independent New Vegas route, you even have the choice to determine which factions get to stay in the Mojave, picking and choosing which factions are in line with your utopian society. As a player, it's up to us to determine the future of the Mojave. Fallout New Vegas is a deeply political game, but it works because instead of telling you what to believe, it presents you a separate, but realistic world to explore. With most of its choices not being based on good or evil, 
but instead asking you what actions you personally believe will lead to the best outcome for the people of New Vegas. The player is allowed to shape their own opinions through their experiences traveling the Mojave. The choices you make ultimately say more about you and your experiences than it does the particular slant of any one rider. And that's at least partially why Fallout New Vegas has survived the test of time so well.